Today in our 2000 Toyota Sienna, we'll be installing the Takancha Prodigy P2 Brake Controller, part number 90885. We'll be installing this in conjunction with the e-trailer brake controller install kit, part number ETBC7. Starting with our install kit here at the back of the vehicle, we're going to mount the new 7-pole bracket to our new 7 and 4-pole trailer connector. We'll use the bolts and nuts provided with our install kit to secure the bracket to the trailer connector. Once we have the hardware installed finger tight, we'll go ahead and run it down. To assist in mounting our trailer connector to the vehicle, we're going to use the tow ready no drill mounting bracket, part number 18140. We'll take the no drill mounting bracket, line it up with the seven pole bracket, and then this will be the upside down position for this application. Then install the fasteners and tighten them down. Note, we're going to go ahead and cut the purple wire short as it's intended for trailer reverse lights, which we'll not be installing for this application. Now before I attach the bracket to the hitch to secure it, I'm going to go ahead and partially tape up the wires coming out of the back of the new 7-pole connector. This will help protect them over time and assist with bundling them up, providing a better install look. Note in some applications, you can also use the wire loom that's provided with the ETB C7 install kit. We'll go ahead and stop there for now and mount our bracket to our hitch. Now before I put my bracket in place, we're going to go ahead and cut the zip ties that are securing the current four pole connector on the vehicle and we'll re-secure it later. To attach the bracket to the hitch, we'll use the worm gear clamp provided. We'll take the four pole connector that's already on the vehicle, route it here to the pigtail from our new trailer connector and install the two. But before I do that, I recommend to use some dielectric grease between these two connection points and we'll be using the Edelman dielectric grease part number 11755. Just a little bit of grease between the two connectors will help prevent corrosion over time. We'll also no longer need the four pole cap so I'll go ahead and remove it. Next, we're going to go ahead and connect the gray duplex cable wiring to our blue and black wire coming from the seven pole pigtail. The blue wire will be for our trailer braking. The black wire will be for the 12 volt hot lead that runs to our seven pole connector. To prepare our gray duplex cable, we'll go ahead and take it, use our utility knife and cut a small slice in the sheathing, but enough that we go through it. Then we'll peel the sheathing back and cut it off to get it out of the way. Next, I'll strip back the two wires. Now I'll go ahead and take the black and white wire and connect it to the black and blue wire. We'll match the two blacks together, color for color. We'll use the butt connectors that are already secured to the pigtail coming from the seven pole connector. We'll then take our white wire and attach it to the blue wire. Now with these connections made, I'm going to go ahead and wrap them up with some black electrical tape to finish securing these wires as they are going to route to the hitch and ultimately our gray duplex cable will run to the engine compartment. Now with my wire taped up, I'm going to go ahead and use some of the zip ties provided with the install kit to secure the wiring here along the top of the frame. Now with the white ground wire and our gray duplex cable remaining, I'm gonna go ahead and tape them up, and then we're gonna run them along the frame towards the front of the vehicle. Now using self-tapping screw provided with the install kit and the pre-attached ring terminal here to our white ground wire, we'll go ahead and secure it to the frame, providing the ground for our new four and seven pole trailer connectors.
Now with our wiring back here installed and secured, we're going to take the remaining portion of the great duplex cable, run it up to the front of the vehicle, ultimately up through the engine compartment towards the battery. Keep in mind when routing any of your wiring to stay away from moving components such as steering or suspension or excessive heat such as the exhaust. Once we're finished installing and securing it, we'll cut off the excess from the zip ties to clean up our install look. Now as we run our gray duplex cable to the front of the vehicle, we'll need to route the white wire into the cabin of the vehicle. Now, because we don't have any manufactured grommets that we can run our wiring through, we're going to need to drill out a, a hole in the firewall and install a snap bushing. We're going to use the Spectro Snap Bushing part number SWC8057. Now from inside the vehicle, it's got a lot of insulation here on the firewall. To make our install a little easier, we're going to go ahead and cut out some of the insulation so that we can see the firewall. Using a hole saw bit, we can cut away a section of the insulation. Now with the insulation out of our way, we'll take a small pilot bit, drill it through the firewall, and then double check where it comes out to make sure we don't interfere with any of the manufacturer's components. Now we'll go ahead and move back underneath the vehicle where we'll be able to see up the firewall and check our pilot bit. Now as you can see, we come out right next to the air conditioning lines, so we'll need to be careful as we drill out our hole larger to put our snap bushing in place. With our pilot hole made, we'll now go ahead and use the step bit process where we keep enlarging the bit until we get to our final size of 11 16 Once we have the hole drilled out, we'll go ahead and put our snap bushing in place. Now with our snap bushing in place, we'll move back underneath the vehicle. We'll mark our gray duplex cable where it'll go in through the firewall. As you can see, we've marked the wire when it was up on the firewall. Then we'll go ahead and remove the gray sheathing. Now I might remove just a little extra, but we want enough that we can run the white wire inside the cabin of the vehicle and the remaining portion of the black power wire to the top of the engine compartment. Once we have the gray duplex cable removed, we'll go ahead and cut the white wire. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull my gray duplex cable back into position. Take the white wire and feed it into the grommet. Here's the section where we remove the gray duplex cable. We'll go ahead and temporarily route our wire to where we'll be mounting the breakers. And we're gonna mount them here into the steel right in front of the battery. So I'll go ahead and route it there temporarily, cut off the excess. Then we'll use the remaining portion of our gray duplex cable, routing it from inside the cabin of the vehicle, out through our grommet, and back up here to the top of the engine compartment so that we can use the two wires to run power and ground for the brake controller. Now that we've got our wires run into the cabin of the vehicle and out here into the engine compartment, we'll need to mount our breakers. We're gonna mount a 40 amp breaker for the black power wire that we ran from the back of the vehicle for the 12 volt supply to our seven pole connector and a 20 amp breaker that'll come from the power wire from our gray duplex cable to power the brake controller. We'll use the self-tapping screws provided with the install kit to secure our breakers here directly to the sheet metal. Now with our breakers installed and secured, we go ahead and start installing the wiring. I'll start with our black power wire that comes from the seven pole connector. Route it here to our 40 amp breaker. I'll cut off the excess, strip it back, secure a small ring terminal to the wire. We'll then take the ring terminal and attach it to the silver side of the breaker as the copper side will run the hot lead from here to the positive battery post. 
Now to secure our ring terminal here to the breaker, we'll install a star washer and nut that's provided with the install kit. Now with the nut installed finger tight, I'll then take the gray duplex cable, remove the sheathing from here to the end, and use my black wire to attach to the silver side of our 20 amp breaker for the power to the brake controller. Now I will go ahead and remove the sheathing. I've moved closer to the firewall because the white wire is gonna run directly to the battery. We'll install a ring terminal and secure it to the negative battery post to provide the ground for our brake controller. Just like we did for the power wire for the sub pole connector, we'll trim off the excess, strip it back, and add a ring terminal. We'll do the same thing with our ground wire. Figure our length, cut off the excess, and strip it back. Here for our ground wire, we're gonna add a large ring terminal, so it's large enough to secure to the negative battery post. Now the battery post doesn't have a stud like the positive battery terminal, but we can loosen the nut on the clamp, so we'll go ahead and do that now. After we remove the nut, we'll install the ring terminal then re-secure the nut. Next, we're gonna move into the cabin of the vehicle. Our next step will be to locate the brake switch and the wiring that comes out of the brake switch. This will be the wire that is hot only when the key is on and the brake pedal is depressed. To locate that, we can use our test light by grounding our clamp and probing the wire. Once we have it probed, we'll press on the brake pedal, signaling that that wire is hot only when the brake pedal is depressed. We'll be looking for a green wire with a white tracer. Now to connect our brake controller pigtail to the wire, we'll use the quick splice connector provided with the install kit. This quick splice connector will slide over the manufacturer's wire, then we'll slide the red wire from our brake controller pigtail into the quick splice connector, crimp it down, and close the clasp. Next, we'll go ahead and make the connection with the blue wire from the pigtail and the white wire we ran from the seven pole connector. I'll cut off the excess from the white wire we ran into the cabin of the vehicle. Then we'll use the yellow buck connector to secure the wires. Next, we can take the white and black wire from our brake controller pigtail and the white and black wire from the gray duplex cable we ran up to the battery area for power and ground to the brake controller. I'll go ahead and cut off the excess and strip the wire back. Then we'll use the yellow buck connector to secure the four wires. Now with all our connection made, we're going to want to wrap up these connection points with some black electrical tape to help keep them free from dirt, dust, debris, and moisture. We'll also wrap up a portion of our brake controller pigtail to help bundle up the wires and clean up our install look. Then we'll move to mounting the brake controller pocket. Using the screws provided with the brake controller, we'll go ahead and mount the pocket here where it's nice and easy access for the driver. Then we'll take the brake controller pigtail, route it up through the brake controller, and plug the brake controller pigtail into the back of the brake controller. Go ahead and mount the brake controller in the pocket, and then secure our wiring underneath the dash. Now we've completed the install in the cabin of the vehicle, we'll move back to the engine compartment where we'll need to make a couple of hot leads to go from the breakers to the positive battery terminal. 
Now using the leftover black power wire from inside our gray duplex cable, we'll strip back two ends and add small ring terminals. Again, these ring terminals are gonna to attach to the copper side of our breakers. and then secure them with the star washer and nut, just like we used earlier. Once they're on, we'll go ahead and tighten down all four studs of the breakers. Take our power wire, route it over to the positive battery terminal and cut off the excess. Add two large ring terminals so we can attach it to the positive battery post. Once we have both ring terminals on, we'll go ahead and remove the nut. Install our ring terminals. Then re-secure the nut. Once we have it tightened down, we can go ahead and put our cap back on. And we've finished our install of our brake controller with install kit. Next, let's go through operation of our brake controller. With the blue lights on the display, it'll show that we have power to our brake controller. Then when we plug in our trailer, we'll get a C for connection. Once we unplug our trailer brake, our trailer pigtail, we'll get a flash of NC showing no connection. With that, we're ready to hit the road. And that does it for the install of our Takancha Prodigy P2 brake controller, part number 90885, in conjunction with our e-trailer brake controller install kit, part number ETB-C7, for our 2000 Toyota Sienna.